Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my videos. Miss Cherney here. Happy Tuesday, May 5th to everybody out there. It is also tie-dye day, so we've got our tie-dye gear going on. Happy Spirit Week. I'm excited for tomorrow, which is half day, and the next day, which is sports day, and Friday, which is GLA swag t-shirt, anything you want kind of day. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our Tuesday work. Now, I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can see what it looks like. Here we go. Remember, this is in your brand new packet with this on the front. Let's go all the way up to the front so you know which one we're talking about. This one. First grade literacy remote learning packet, May 2020, because we are in a brand new month. Okay, so we're scrolling past me, Jane. Don't worry, you can still go look at her videos. But now we're learning about a brand new book, and so I'm really excited for today. Before we go into that book, let's practice with the word features. Remember, features are a part of something. Touch some of the features on your face. You might touch your eyes. What would you use your eyes for? I use my eyes to see. Touch your nose, that's a feature. Touch your ears, that's a feature. Your mouth. Touch your forehead, your cheeks, your chin. Give your face a massage. Massage all those features of your face face, wake that face up, ready to learn, and blow your lips out. <sniffs> nice warm up. Okay, what do you use your features for? I use my eyes to see, my nose to smell, my mouth to taste. Fill in the blank. I use my blank to blank. If you need more time, you can pause the video. I'm going to keep going. Today, we're going to read a new text. It's about an animal called a seahorse. Silent connection if you've heard about a seahorse before. And show me a wonder sign if you don't remember or you don't know what a seahorse is. Don't worry, you're gonna be an expert at seahorses by the time we are done with this book. A seahorse is kind of like what it sounds. It's a horse looking fish. So it kind of looks like a horse, but it's actually a fish and it's itty little bitty. It's an animal that has unique features and we're going to think about the unique features of a seahorse as we read the text. Our text is called Seahorse, the Shyest Fish in the Sea. And normally what we would do is we would sit on the carpet and Miss Rossi, or Miss Cherney would read this text to you. And you would be sitting with your back straight, your eyes tracking the speaker. And that's exactly what I would like for you to do today. Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall and your eyes are tracking the screen. Nice job, okay. Instead of me or Miss Rossi reading the text to you, I found a video of the book. And I'm not talking about any video. It's not a video where they turn the pages and you just see the pages. This video actually acts out what's happening in the book. It's like a movie of the book. And so you should be very excited to watch this book, Seahorse, the Shyest Fish in the Sea. You can find this video by going to this link in the digital packet. You can click right here. You can type this in if you want to, or the easiest way is I'm going to link this in the Google Classroom, so you can find it in the Google Classroom too. I'm gonna to show you what it looks like. And as you're reading, I want you to be noticing and wondering about the text. So if you go to the YouTube link, it'll look a little bit like this, and you will pl press play and watch the video. It's important that you open up a new tab and save my tab right here so that you can always come back to my video. So right now, please pause my video, go ahead and start watching the Seahorse book video, and I will meet you back here. Nice. Wow, that is such an interesting text about the life cycle of a seahorse. It has many unique features. Let's think about what we learned. 
Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again with you. And we're gonna fill in the blank about some of the things that we were noticing while we were reading. I'm gonna start off with this one. I notice a lot of different kinds of seahorses on the front and the back of the book. So we've got a seahorse, we've got different kinds of seahorses in the text, and those pictures, they were all colored how? Were they colored beautifully? Were they colored red? What did you see in the book? Write it down. I like colored differently. What did you notice about that? Now I also noticed the words have different what? In the text, the words were showing up with different what? I'm gonna give you a clue. Some are small and some are big words. So what do they all have? Different what? Fill it in. If you need more time, you can always pause. Now I also notice that a seahorse holds onto a branch with its what? What does it use to hook onto that branch? Fill in the blank. If you need more time, you can pause the video. Okay. Now there are a few words that we might not know in our text and it's helpful to pay attention to the words that we don't know so we can figure out the words we don't know so we can understand what we're reading and so we can become better readers. So if you need refreshing, reread the text. Some of the words might not be familiar to you. You might not know them. Use some clues in the text to help you find the meaning of these words. There are a lot of different strategies that we have to figure out the meaning of words. You can use the outside in strategy by looking at the words around the word. So as they are talking about the word invisible in the text, what sort of things were happening in the text? What were the words around the word invisible? You can also look inside the word. So if you wanna see the word invisible, you might see this word inside the word invisible. And it's the word visible. Visible means able to be seen. Visible means able to be seen. That means that you can see something that's visible. But you see, this isn't the word visible. This is the word invisible. And in means not. So if we look at this answer, we can see that this word means not and then able to be seen. So let's find that answer, Joyce, to look at. No. That's not what we said. To see, that might be it because visible means you can see something. Wait, but I remember in is in the beginning and that means not. So it's not that one. Not able to be seen. You should be going ding, 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 because that's exactly what we were talking about. Let's double check this last one just to make sure. Something that is pretty. Uh, no, that's not anything about invisible. Okay, so we use the outside in strategy to look inside the word to find information about the word invisible. Now some of these words you might have to look outside the word to figure out what they might mean. You have the word snapper, clever, and camouflage. So go reread the text and think about what's happening when they're using these words. Go ahead and use process of elimination. That means when you cross out the wrong answers and circle the right one to use, <clears throat> to find the correct answer. Pause the video now, rewatch the seahorse video, and I'll meet you back here when you're done. Excellent. I'm really excited about those answers that you Found. Okay, so let's clear this out and keep going. Today we have another new idea with grammar, and it is called a demonstrative. 
Can you say demonstrative? <laughs> nice. Now, more importantly than what this grammar is called, demonstrative, I want you to know what it is. So that's a really long word to explain a really easy idea. And to help us think about this idea, let's pretend we're going on a bear hunt. Remember, when we go on a bear hunt, we need to be very careful about what we bring. What would you want to bring if we were going on a bear hunt? Tell someone in your house what you would bring. I would bring these shoes. So I'm going on a bear hunt and I would take these shoes. Pause the video. What would you take? You can say, I'm going on a bear hunt and I am taking. Meet me back here once you've decided what you're taking. Good. Notice in my sentence, I said this word, these shoes. And when I say these shoes, I'm talking about these shoes right here specifically. The word these is plural. So you can choose a plural word that ends in S to show more than one. I'm going to explain what I just said to make it a little more clear. We used to learn in class about the difference between plural nouns and singular nouns. Nouns that were plural had an S at the end. Look right here, here's our S. I have underlined it for you right here. That's our S. That means the noun is talking about more than one thing. Shoes, look how many we have. We've got one, two, two shoes. So that noun is plural. And because that noun ends in this letter right here, we are going to say the word these, these shoes. You try, find something around your room and say these sentences out loud. I am going on a bear hunt and I am taking this blank. I'm going on a bear hunt and I am taking these blank. Pause the video and try it on your own. Now notice that this is different than the word these. We use the word this when we are talking about something that is singular. Singular means one. So only one thing. If I was going to say, I'm going on a bear hunt and I am taking this pen. Ooh, wow, look at that. It's showing up as tie-dye in the little video. Ooh, that was cool. If I was saying I'm taking this pen, I only had one pen. So I wouldn't say I am taking these pen. I would say I am taking this pen. But if I was gonna take a marker and a pen, I would say I'm taking these things. Or if I was taking two pens, I would say I am taking these pens because now, now, the pens became plural, more than one. So go ahead and write, just like I did, a one and a two. One is this, two is these. Good. Now demonstratives demonstrate or show which noun you're talking about, and they make the sentence more specific. It shows that I'm talking about these shoes, instead of just one shoe or any shoes. So I'm gonna clear that out. And we're going to practice. Look at the sentences. 
I have underlined the noun for you to help you out. Your job is to circle the demonstrative. The demonstrative tells the reader or the listener the location of the noun and how many there are. I said these shoes, so it means that there's more than one. It also tells you where they are because you could point to it and say, these shoes. Okay, let's circle the demonstrative. The demonstrative works just like the article and it tags the noun. So let's practice tagging our nouns. That seahorse is a male. Remember, I've underlined the noun and this demonstrative, just like the articles, come right before the noun, that seahorse. Now, is seahorse singular with one or is it plural with two? Does it mean one or more than one? Seahorse, how many is that? That is one thing. So that's why we use the word that. Now we've also got this baby is swimming away. I've underlined the noun baby and we're gonna tag the demonstrative this. How many babies do we have? Do we have one baby or more than one baby? Yes, we only have one baby again. So we're gonna use the word this. Let's try this one. These seahorses are tiny. Notice I have an S at the end right here. Here's the demonstrative, these. Is this talking about one seahorse or more than one seahorse? Or do we have one or do we have more than one seahorse? Yeah, that's right, we do not have one, we have seahorses. That could be a million seahorses. And so we would use the word these as the demonstrative. So you can pause the video here and record this information on your packet. Remember, demonstratives come before the noun. And if your student families are having trouble finding the demonstrative, remind them that it comes right before the noun in the sentence. So we've learned a lot about different determiners. Determiners are the big fancy term or things that come before the noun. It helps us find the noun that we're talking about. Here are our determiners that we've read about so far. A, an, and the, those are the articles. And now we have demonstratives. So this is the important thing that we're learning today. Our demonstratives are this, that, these, and those. And it tells you how many. It also tells you the location. So here, there, here, or there. And we also have one, one, or more than one. That is showing us that this means one, that means one, these mean more than one, and those mean more than one. Don't worry, we're gonna keep practicing. These demonstratives are special because they help the reader know the location of the noun and how many of them there are. So if you need help, you can always call your teacher you can always rewatch this video and we're gonna keep practicing so it will get easier. Excellent job today with your demonstratives and the brand new text. I'm really excited to meet you back here for tomorrow's video where we wear crazy hats. Bye bye.